Sadly, the Bushnell Forge is no longer with us, but suddenly on the market we have this Zerotech Trace Advance that has the same magnification range, has the same 50 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube, the turrets look the same. The amount of adjustment that you get is almost exactly the same. I think that everybody got it wrong when they said that aliens were going to invade and replace us. I think they were missing a couple syllables and it was Australians are going to invade. This is the Zerotech Trace Advance, and I think a lot of you guys are gonna like this scope. We're gonna delve into its features and functions, but first, I wanna make sure that you get this link up here. This is to Cyclops Joe Ray's review of this scope. I saw this review a long time ago. I haven't watched it since because I wanna have my own notes on this, and we're gonna see where we mesh and where we differ. What I'd like to point out is that, okay, we'll start off with that form factor. Four and a half to 27. So four and a half X, you can deal with practical targets at practical distances. You wanna do some deer hunting, you wanna do some hog hunting, as long as they are out there and not actually attacking you or anything, uh, this is gonna be a scope that you'll be able to see what you're after. Four and a half X is great. If you crank this up to its maximum magnification, that is 27 X. That's a pretty high magnification for a varmint scope. So this can be something that is very flexible in a broad range of situations. They build this as a long range hunting scope, and I can really see that. If you have a good magnum, even if you have a, just a normal short action cartridge, and you wanna be able to get on target at a variety of distances, whether that's you know steel targets or the ones that run around and yip a lot, then yeah, this is gonna be able to deal with a lot of that stuff. And handling this wide magnification range is this big old 50 millimeter lens out on the end. And then managing those lenses is the, uh, the coatings that are on these. First off, we have high quality lenses and we have really good coatings too. So I'm gonna show you the image here. This is my resolution chart. And I want you to see what happens as you start to see these little lines get smaller and smaller. There's plenty of resolution. There's a lot of contrast. You can see contrast with the objects that are stuck into the board. Uh, there are all kinds of things that you can see in here, courtesy of the wonderful lenses and their lens coatings. These are fully multi-coated and they perform every bit as well as that last scope that I reviewed, the Thrive uh, 3 to 12 by 44 uh, millimeter scope. That one was a fabulous scope as well. It looked really, really good through there and this pulls it off with just a lot more magnification. The main tube is a one piece 30 millimeter tube, and that's one of the things that's going to separate this from some of the really huge tactical scopes out there. This is designed to be a long range hunter, as they, they say, but this is actually a really great tactical scope with a smaller package and just kind of a lighter package overall. 30 millimeter tube, everything's lighter than those 34s, and the one thing you're gonna lose in this case is just gonna be that adjustment range. You're gonna trade that weight and you're gonna trade it in for less of an adjustment range. This seems to have large lenses on the inside. That's my guess because this only has 17 and a half mils of travel total on the, uh, the elevation and the windage turrets. The turrets themselves each have a lock. So all you have to do is pull on them pull up or pull to the side, and then these are going to be deployed and ready for use. So you can click through these, and these have a really sharp click to them. They just lock right in place. Not much wiggle at all. And then once you get to the spot where you wanna lock it down, push it down, it's very easy to actuate the lock on this. Some of them get a little bit sticky, some of them are a little finicky, but this one just snaps right in place. It's very eager to please. This is a milliradian scope, with 0.1 milliradian clicks and 10 milliradians all the way around. That's the way I like it. I don't like to mess with, you know, if we're dealing with metric, I want everything to be in tens. I want everything to be divisible by 10. I don't want any funky five and a half or even, you know, five milliradians per turn. I want 10 and this does it on there. The clicks feel good, but how do they work? Let's take a look at the chart here. You can see that it snaps to position every time. This is 100 yards away. It's gonna hit those spots, and then everything is gonna come back to zero. It doesn't matter if we twist these around really fast and you know get into some stuff that the scope isn't even really built for. It doesn't matter, it's gonna come back to zero every time. The turret caps attach to the turrets by the usual three screws around the top, and thankfully, it comes in the box. So we have the little Allen key that comes with it. Not only did they throw in an Allen key, 
These Australians are great. They threw in three set screws, just in case we lose one. So if we're out at the range having to set this up sometime and we lose a set screw, yeah, we have some replacements. I don't think I've seen anybody do that before. So once you find what your zero is, you can set it, lock the turret, and then we'll just pick the cap up. Under the cap, there's a zero stop as well. You see this orange disc? This is something that you can set so that it always hits that zero and you know exactly how to get back. And this is one of the kind that I like because you can set this however you want. Uh, you could set this back on, say, negative one milliradian. Some people like to have a little bit of extra wiggle room. If they have a cartridge that shoots a little bit differently, like maybe it's a, a flatter shooting cartridge and they want to pull it up some, then they can. But in order to set this, all you have to do is uh, loosen up these set screws, and then this plate becomes loose. So you just spin this into position, and there's gonna be kind of a lock where it sticks. So you turn it clockwise until it clicks. And then you tighten this back down. Grab your cap, set it to zero. It'll notch right into those splines and the splines on this are very generous. Some of these are a little bit weird where you can't quite tell if you're, are you on zero? Or are you halfway between that and 0.1? Now this one is really, really nice. And that's it, you now have a zero stop. I can unlock this, I can spin up for days. Actually, since it only has 17 and a half mil radians of turn, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have it for days. But uh, when I try to get back to zero, there it is, bam. And then I can lock it back down. Similar thing with the windage on this side, you just get the three set screws and then you can reset your zero. Of course, there's no zero stop. Now for the other controls, and this is where zero tech really shines. The image through all the scopes that I've tested has been really good but it's just nice to have the way that these things feel. The side parallax adjustment is wonderfully smooth. I should mention at this point, this scope is made in China and it doesn't feel like it at all. This feels like a Japanese scope. It functions like a Japanese scope. Actually, just the way that everything is machined feels like a Japanese scope. And as I spin this, it just is floating in liquid. It feels so smooth and I can hit the exact spots that I'm after. One thing that you 22 long rifle guys will be happy about is that this can focus down as close as 25 meters. So you can adjust your parallax, adjust your focus, and do it all very precisely and smoothly. Moving back to the magnification ring, it's the same thing. This is very smooth and easy to actuate. 180 degrees, just a little bit less than 180 degrees of spin. And this does have the option of a lever that you can attach here uh, to make this just a little bit easier out in the field. At the back, we have a fast focus eyepiece. And this is one that spins again very smoothly. It just feels like it's in fluid. And you can see that attached to the back of this is a flip cap. And this is not your average kind. This is anodized aluminum. It's lightweight. It's very precisely made and everything about it is just really smooth and nice. Instead of relying on magnets or weird little locks, it just has two little posts that mechanically click into place, and then you can just set this however you want. You get one at the front as well. Now, while we're looking at the front of the scope, I want you to take a look at this lens. It's a pretty bright day out there. We have a, a bright blue sky. You see any reflections in there? Probably not much, right? These lenses have coatings that do a great job of just absorbing light and getting it back to the eye. These are ones that are not going to reflect around on the inside. And this is one of the great tricks about zero tech scopes. Same thing with that three to 12 by 44. If you have a deer that's coming down to eat and behind him is the setting sun, as long as the setting sun isn't actually coming through the lens, you actually have a pretty good chance of seeing that deer better than you can with other scopes. There are plenty of scopes that they're gonna blow out, they're gonna bloom, you're gonna get all these internal reflections, and this does a really good job of keeping those away. Um, 
usually in this case, I just found that if I'm looking at something that's roughly in the direction of the sun, I might get a couple little blooms, mostly at high magnification. And if I moved my eye just a little bit, they went away. So as long as I'm parallax adjusted, I can still take the shot. I'm still gonna get lots of resolution and contrast, even in those difficult situations where a light might be kind of shining directly into the lens. Great job, Zero Tech. Both of their scopes have done that really well. The 30 millimeter tube should be up to take some abuse. Everything about this should be able to handle water, so you should have no trouble with, you know, getting rain on this or dropping it in a puddle. Uh, they say that it's waterproof. It's not IP tested, so it doesn't have that actual standard applied to it. I'll bet it's pretty expensive to get that done. But um, yeah, they say that it's gonna be waterproof. I'm sure it's fine. I haven't had the other one uh, come to any damage in rain or anything, so it should be fine. So now, with that 30 millimeter tube, how much weight savings did we get? Uh, some. <laughs> Compared to a 34 millimeter, it's actually pretty good. Uh, a, a 34 millimeter tube scope is gonna weigh up in the mid 30s. You know, it could get really heavy. This is a 29 ounce scope. So not too bad, considering what kind of magnification range we have to deal with, the fact that it can be set up for varmint shooting. Uh, it's really not bad. So now it's time to take a look at one of the most important critical pieces inside here, and that is the reticle. This is a first focal plane scope. Everything about this one is milliradian. And the reticle that we have inside here is a very pretty Christmas tree. You can see that this is not so crazy as the Horus reticles like the H59 or any of the tremors. You're not gonna lose anything behind any of those dots in there. And you don't have to deal with all that stuff. You don't have to think about windage dots or anything. Uh, this is just set up as a nice, simple Christmas tree. And if you want, when you're starting out, and I recommend this, this is a great scope to pick up if you wanna start getting into DMR st uh, styles of shooting. This doesn't have much adjustment range. As I mentioned, 17 and a half mils. So this is not something you're gonna be taking out to a mile. You're gonna get this out to about a thousand yards if you have a 20 MOA base and all that. But this is still just a great practical distance DMR type scope. And what you can do to start out with, if you're not comfortable with the Christmas tree reticle, then what you can do is dial for your, uh, for your elevation at first. Okay, so I'm gonna dial up to 2.4 for whatever distance that I'm dealing with. And then I'm gonna use the hash lines in the reticle just on the main crosshair so that I can deal with my windage. That's a fine way to go. I've done that before on other scopes, it's great. But as you get more confident with that, you may decide that you want to try just using the reticle. And there are some great reasons to do that. Number one, you don't have to take your hands off anything to mess around. The only thing you might have to do is dial your parallax. But if you have a quick shot that you have to take, maybe on a running animal, just dial that parallax and then you just stay inside the scope. No need to dial, no need to mess around. Everything is in there. Just use the reticle. Use it to hold over, to hold off and make that hit. And that is exactly what I did with that Horus H59. I didn't dial anything to hit that 400 yard running hog. Everything was locked down. I just used the reticle. As you get more confident with it, you're gonna be able to make more and more difficult shots. So this is the kind of scope that I recommend for a lot of you guys that wanna get started in that kind of shooting. I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of this. Now I mentioned that this is first focal plane and we have a very large zoom ratio and those two don't play together very well. 4X is great. 5X is good. 6X is starting to get a little iffy and then once you get up you know, to 8X and all that, uh, then things really get tough. And here's why. That reticle is going to stretch and shrink along with the target on the other end. So you're gonna have a really teeny little reticle when you are zoomed out. And then when you zoom in to that 27X, this could be a really fat reticle that's very difficult to deal with. You might be covering whole targets. So we're gonna see what this is actually like. I'm at four and a half X. And I'm looking at my neighbor's house. They love this stuff. All right, the report says that the reticle is usable, but it can be tough if I'm looking at some varied backgrounds. Like if it's a leafy background, if it's bark, um, I'm looking at brick right now and it does start to fall off because things do get very, very fine. There is 
every one of these guys that makes a reticle like this is gonna to try to find some way to deal with that. And in this case, what they've done is they have these really thick stadia that really only appear as you zoom out. When you zoom in, you can't see them anymore. But you get these long, thick black bars that slowly taper to a really sharp point, and those are gonna point you toward the center. Now this one is going to have more difficulty than some of the others that I've dealt with, like the, uh, the Athlon uh, Helos 2-12. to That one had a great big circle in the middle that helps you find that center dot, but the reason why they didn't do that in here is because of the high end. When I zoom all the way in, I don't want this to be a big fat reticle that's gonna hide targets and just be generally a mess. No, this still retains a lot of that fineness, so I can make very, very small measurements. They have a couple stadia in here that I can use. Yeah, just to make measurements. These look like they're 0.2 milliradians between some of these. So yeah, I can make very fine measurements with this and I wouldn't want to lose that. So at the low end, it's going to be a little bit tougher and I'm going to hope for a clean background. But then as we zoom in, that's where this really starts to come alive. Just something to think about. They both work, but it's gonna be just a little bit harder when you're zoomed all the way out. In, that, in the mid sections, like say you're around 10X or 16X, you're gonna be able to see everything just fine. All right, so now bottom line, what does this cost? This one is retailing right now for about $950. And when you compare this to scopes of a similar build, uh, like you're looking at the Track Toric UHD, uh, that one has a lesser zoom ratio. I think that its image is sharper and it's just a little bit brighter, probably because it has that lower zoom ratio. But that one's getting up to 1200 bucks and beyond. Uh, it kind of depends on which model you get. Uh, this one I think is priced very well for what it is. This is an MSRP of I think around 1200 and uh, I'm gonna have a code for you guys. It's gonna be regress. You're gonna have a coupon code. I don't know what it is yet, so I'll put some of the details uh, down below in the description so you can see uh, how much you get off this, but I'm hoping it's a significant discount and you guys can pick this scope up. I think that this would be a really good option for you guys that want to get into some very precise tactical shooting. This could be a good race scope. If you wanna be able to use this in competition, it's gonna be lighter weight than a bunch of those big ones, like the 34 millimeter tubes. Um, and it's, it's just gonna be flexible for a bunch of stuff. If you wanna be able to deal with coyotes and prairie dogs and other things like that, this is going to have all the precision that you need. It's gonna have a reticle that's set up really well for that. And yeah, this could be a good one that you really grow into and turn this into, well, turn yourself into a monster out on the range uh, by using this. Just kind of starting out simple and then work your way more difficult. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, y'all. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below because we have a bunch more videos coming out, more scope reviews. We're gonna be talking about more gear and we have some more six millimeter arc to play with. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.